Hey everyone, I'm excited to launch into this one because I think this is really like the crux of why people don't become marine biologists because they don't know what careers are out there. So although this is not a complete list, this video is to help broaden your scope as to where jobs might be and how you could apply your marine biology degree. For most people, being a marine biologist means that you have a marine biology degree. Once you have that, you can apply that to so many different things. Or you can match it up, like I did in video one, using your Venn diagram with something else. And that then is what creates a whole plethora of different job opportunities and different career choices where you can apply that marine knowledge that you now have around how the animals live, how the oceans work, how it applies to every part of our life. And then from there, you can apply it to anything that you like. I was at one point meeting up with a, a young girl who had asked about marine careers. And in advance of the meeting, I just started sketching some stuff out and I made up this drawing. What I did was I just drew a line, which outlined the ocean, and then thought of all the jobs that take place under the ocean and all the jobs that take place um, on land that have to do with the ocean. So you can see that there's lots there. Excuse my handwriting, it's not very good. But ultimately it shows that there are hundreds of different jobs. And actually since then I've thought of more options. So let's start in the bottom corner on the left and explore from there, shall we? Okay, here we go. So first off, right on the waves there, you can see what I'm trying to draw is a Petri dish, which is ultimately like microbiology, looking at the plankton, looking at the small microscopic animals. And from there, you can do all sorts of studies on how plankton affects our atmosphere, oxygen and climate, studying the things that are kind of unseen. From there, you'll see a diver next to it and it says doing underwater repairs or welding, an underwater photographer, scuba instructor, free diver, a scientist. A lot can be done as a scuba diver. Okay, so next to it, you'll see an ROV, which means a remote operated vehicle, remote controlled underwater camera, and sometimes it, it collects samples while it's down there as well. ROVs are very cool tools that help us go even deeper, further into the ocean. And so being an ROV pilot or being somebody who analyzes the collections or the samples of the photos that come up from an ROV would be amazing. You'll see a whale there. <laughs> a, so you can help with whale watching, whale science, underwater acoustics, whale tags. So even some whales have tags on them so that you can actually be able to track where they go and who makes those tags. Like who's the one who's actually applying their engineering or their electronics or their MacGyvering skills and applying it to a tag that would be able to stick onto a whale but not harm it and then be able to transmit that information up into a satellite and onto a desktop computer. We need scientists who know how to do that stuff. So is that you? Who knows? Okay, so if you go down to the bottom, you'll see there's corals, so studies around corals, uh, jobs that have to do with the sediment, sediment collection, even just an inventor on how to collect samples in a new way. So coral chemistry, geologists, or even the study of pollution at the bottom of the ocean. Plastics are now being found at the bottom of the ocean, and we need someone to be able to study the impacts of that plastic on the deep sea. So you'll see somebody in a submersible next who designs it, who creates it, who constructs it, and then who tests it, who's monitoring to make sure that the people who are in there are going to be safe. Robot engineers are needed and so are scientists and so are videographers and technicians. So above that you'll see a fishnet. So fisheries is still so important. So many countries rely on fish as their main source of protein and so we need fishers to still go out and collect fish. How do we design the nets so that turtles and dolphins don't get stuck in those fishing nets so that we're only catching the fish we actually want to catch. Who's doing the science on that? And who is also the one who is going to monitor those fisheries and make sure that, that we're not bringing home animals that aren't needed or that are endangered? Stock assessment. So stock being like a population and there's assessment biologists out there who are looking at how many animals are there out there and if we were to take this percentage of those animals, would we still have enough left to be able to keep making more? Like, so the animal's population is still abundant and healthy. There's scientists out there who are looking at diversity and how fishing practices affect other animals. So if we're taking a big net and raking it over the bottom of the seafloor, what does that do to the other animals, to their habitats, to the livelihood of these animals? If you're fascinated by the fishery, but don't necessarily want to go fishing, there's some really interesting jobs around just simply studying the impacts of fisheries. Governments are involved in setting policies and setting quotas, saying how many fish can be caught in each, of each species each year, and how they should be caught, and at what time of year they should be caught. Those are called fisheries biologists or fisheries assessment uh, officers or fisheries monitors. All of those types of jobs are really important and often well paid. Okay, so if we go up and above the surface, you'll see that we're talking now about boating, marine architects, 
fishermen and expedition leaders and on boats, also lots of science. You'll see a little cruise ship there for marine navigation or vessel design. Even fishing charters happen on large vessels like that. Drones are becoming more and more of a popular tool for science and they're being used to study whales from up above to help with collecting their whale snot. <laughs> it's not snot, it's actually the, their exhale, uh, but snot kind of sounds funnier and cooler. But anyway, they uh, fly over top of the whale and they collect their exhale, and that's helping the scientists understand what's going on inside the lungs of the marine mammals. How cool is that? GIS helps us map the oceans. The satellites help us take pictures of large plankton blooms or potentially of large spills. It also helps us predict weather in regards to waves and potential destruction for hurricanes that will affect land as well as that will affect animals and you know the marine cycles. And it even helps us understand boat traffic as we're uh, watching vessels as they all have little pingers to tell us where those vessels are. We can track how many vessels are on the water right now and to determine if those vessels are gonna run into any storms and how they can prepare or how they might be able to avoid them. So working at an aquarium, that says Van Aqua. So the Vancouver Aquarium has tons of amazing marine biologists working at it within the conservation field to their veterinarians and vet techs, to the education staff, to their communications team. So fundraisers are needed for these nonprofit groups. Getting fundraising experience is an excellent skill to be able to have for if you're trying to work at a nonprofit. Aquarists are the people that take care of the animals that live in an aquarium. And trainers are the ones that normally take care of the marine mammals, so dolphins or whales. Lots of cool jobs at an aquarium and a great place to get started. There's other offices that you might work on land, but that all have to do with the oceans is somewhere like Nat Geo. They have tons of amazing scientists, biologists, and researchers. So working for a nonprofit like WWF, which is the World Wildlife Fund, is not World Wrestling Federation. A lot of people get those confused. They do a lot of interesting policy and advocacy work that helps inform government or potentially inform the the public about what's going on in the oceans. That says restaurants. Working at a restaurant, a seafood restaurant, you can set your menu or influence the menu to say that we're only gonna serve sustainable seafood. That makes a huge difference because if that one restaurant or if a chain of restaurants all agree to only serve sustainable seafood, that's hundreds and hundreds of dishes and meals per year that are affected by that decision. You can have a lot of influence working in a restaurant. Working for DFO is what it says there. That's Canada's Department of Fisheries and Oceans. And so working for DFO has lots of different jobs in science, policy, communications around what that research is and what's going on in the oceans today, policy and politics, so actually becoming an elected official and uh, using that influence and that vote to be able to move your policy and agenda forward on ocean issues. Advocacy is normally what people do to influence the government. So uh, if you're outside the government, but you want the government to do something specific to save a specific area or maybe to make a marine protected area near where you live, those kinds of advocacy moves is when you have to work collaboratively with the government or First Nations, which is what that stands for, or Aboriginal groups. Often they work together to ultimately share resources and ensure that the Aboriginal or First Nations groups in the area are having access to their traditional territories and their traditional resources, such as fish. Working at a company that makes products, for example, uh, which is what it says there, like a retail designer, you make the decision of what those materials are made of. If you love fashion and you love the oceans, there are new companies that are coming out that are only selling products that are made from non-plastic based sources, only organic products, and that are good for the ocean. Okay, onto the other page. Okay, so uh, this is like, those are the mountains in the top corner there. Freshwater biologists, how glaciers and the snow-capped mountains affect our ocean and how that water eventually will drain down into the sea and how the amount of snow on a particular mountain can predict the amount of plankton that might come in the next couple of years. How glaciation is affecting our climate, the amount of salmon that will actually come back to the river every year to come back and spawn. There are lots of people whose job it is is to determine how many salmon will come back to those high altitude lakes and determine how many we should be able to consume or take from that large population and how we can help protect those particular species. There are lots of seabird biologists who are looking at how uh, birds, as they go out into the open ocean, are bringing back ultimately a sampling of what the ocean is there to offer, both in food as well as plastics. Really interesting science is being done and it's really actually quite devastating if you see any pictures of those birds that are uh, full of plastic and have died on the beach biologists that are looking at mud flats. So the, the snails and the clams and the gooey ducks that live inside the mud, there are scientists that study those animals too. We all need energy. We're using energy right now to watch this video and for me to make it. Working for energy companies is a great way to be able to influence how we get our energy. 
So whether you work for an oil and gas company and encourage them to make choices that are going to make as little impact on the environment as possible, or you work for an alternative energy source like wind or tidal, many of those wind farms are out in the middle of the ocean. A biologist is needed to understand where those wind farms should be placed, how the winds and currents are going to affect the, the structures themselves so they don't fall over, or how the fish and whales will get around those new structures and how they'll be affected by it. So wave energy also, that is a wave buoy, that's my drawing of a wave buoy, that ultimately collects the energy from the waves as they pass by it and the buoy doesn't even move, but it transfers that energy that it collects from that up and down motion when the wave passes and it sends it back to land. I have mermaiding in there too. <laughs> There's lots of jobs that you can do right from home with your computer only. You can teach people about the oceans using education tools, vlogging like this, blogging about the things that you learn or things that are important to you, using social media, uh, podcasts, or even like a protest rally if that's more up your alley. A huge field of jobs is coming out of the climate science issue in regards to scientists that are measuring increased temperature, ocean acidification, and climate refugees. So how people are having to leave their countries because the sea is coming up or because these storms are affecting them, ultimately these people are now going to be displaced out of their homes and have to move to other places, other countries. And how are we going to deal with that human crisis that might come if we don't get our act together? The Navy has really cool jobs and often free training and it gives amazing on the water experience. Lots of interesting jobs in regards to like technical diving and deep sea submersibles, underwater research, and acoustics, so like underwater sound studies. Working at the port right now, I currently am a consultant for the Port of Vancouver. They do a lot of environmental assessments. The shipping industry, everything we own or touch or use pretty much came here on a ship. But shipping is a big part of our life. There are lots of interesting jobs there around how we can design those vessels to be quieter and to be more fuel efficient or how shipping can become more sustainable. Those are little homes in the bottom corner there. So somebody who goes to other people's homes and takes care of their aquariums, you can work at a pet store or even just being a hobbyist, having your own home aquarium. Artists can give a voice to the ocean in a very special way through design, through using their talents to actually support the design of certain products so that there's a circular economy, which is, means that ultimately you're looking at the whole life cycle of that product. So if I buy this chair, does it come apart and is that plastic or those parts recyclable? Or is it possible for us to be able to turn that chair into something else? Or for me to be able to have the company buy back certain portions of the chair so that it doesn't go into the landfill. Inspirational art, authors, writers, all can apply their talents to an ocean type career. Uni, working at university, so becoming a professor, staying in the academic world and teaching others about the knowledge that you have, working as a lab tech, working as a, within the science department, or as a dean, managing the university students and their professors. Lots of interesting jobs in aquaculture, so ultimately raising fish in a farm type environment, but either on land or in the water. Put seafloor mining there too because it's a new industry but it's really not encouraged as it's very destructive to the seafloor and we don't know enough about the seafloor to know if the environment is affected by it. There's a couple others that I wrote down in this other new version, including tech, so VR games, plastics collection designer, so the new guy who's doing the whole ocean cleanup, he started out with a marine interest and applied it to cleaning up the oceans. Gliders are now a new tool that our scientists are using to help monitor the ocean and the engineers that are needed and the scientists that are using those are all really cool jobs. Water quality, testing from city water treatment to just large open body water systems. There's even water quality specialists in aquariums. Okay, am I missing anything? I'm sure I'm missing tons. If you have watched this video and you're like, my job isn't in there, if you are already a marine biologist and you're watching this, fine, and you see that your job isn't listed here, please make a comment in the notes and I'd love to hear about other ways that you've been able to apply your marine biology degree to an interesting role or position. Or if you're watching this and you are thinking of a job already and I haven't mentioned it, please write it down in the comments as well. I'd love to hear about how you might apply your marine biology degree to an interesting marine career or something that's not marine, but you're gonna make it marine because you're gonna connect it to the ocean somehow. Please let me know your thoughts and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cool, thanks everybody. See you soon.